No, no, gracias. Hello, hello everybody. Do we have anybody here? Can you share your comments in the chat? Where are you from? What time is it? We got a special, special. I think yes, we are we are streaming in all platforms from LinkedIn, YouTube. Hello, Ari Arif. From Bangladesh. Nice, nice seeing you. I always see you on the comments. Really participative, so really appreciate you being here, man. We're really excited for today's event. It's gonna be a fun one. We're gonna be talking about some really cool stuff. So we're really excited to have you. Let's see. We're just gonna give it some time just to let some people let people get here. You know, maybe there's some people that are at work. Hello. Maybe you're at home. So this is gonna be a I think like a, a cool moment just to chill, to relax throughout your day or your evening or your night. And we're gonna try to make it fun and just like uh learn a little bit more about some stuff we've been working on and hope you enjoy it. We have some really cool guests. We're gonna get to to talk to them a little bit about what they've been working on, and I think uh, it's it's fun just like being able to learn from different um, from different like uh, points of view from different parts of a, the same project, right? And I think that's like one of the cool things that we're gonna be discussing right now, and and hopefully. That gives you a little insight in, in just like what it takes to make something, make something from scratch in, in a collaborative, collaborative way. So as you guys know, in this ever evolving digital era, we got a whole bunch of tools, a whole bunch of AI web, website builders that are like just revolutionizing uh the world right and, and and you can see it in in everywhere you look at and you'll see stuff from like intuitive design interfaces or even just like user experiences that are more like transformative that are just changing and these tools are like they're not just like platforms or websites but they're more like a like a comp uh, partner in your creative journey you know i think when you start thinking about them that way when you don't see them as a threat you'll be able to just get a lot from them, right? And also just like feel relieved, right? Because it's more of a tool than than just like your enemy as a designer or as a creative. So I think Musho is an AI powered tool that turns like just simple prompts into professional looking websites or landing pages in just seconds. And we're gonna be talking about that a little more. So uh, as I said, Musho is like an intuitive interface and advanced AI that understands the design aesthetics, right? Because we're, we're just like so used to seeing AI doing stuff that doesn't look completely there. It's like kind of crappy sometimes. And if you're a designer, if you have a, a eye, your eye is developed to see beauty and to see design, you'll notice that sometimes things look a little weird, right? And I think us as designers, we might see a commercial or something like that, and, and you'll notice right away is like they used AI, right? And I think uh, Musho is like really, really pushing forward to making AI understand the design aesthetics and also use the user engagement to make it stand out, right? And I think that's something really special you're not you don't see it as often so hopefully we get to learn a little more about that in this uh in this event so welcome everybody hope you're all doing well and we're gonna play a little video for you just uh so you can get a a little context of musho and so we can just get everything started to start talking with our friends here with 
short rojo and mariate so let's play this video Somos la señorita que llega ni conquista. Somos Candela, Ella, Ella. Y en Parayán hay de todos colores y sin renegar aguantamos dolores. Abriendo caminos para generaciones que vienen detrás con todos sus seguidores. Somos como las flores exquisitas, miles de tamaños, figuras y pintas. Como las estrellas infinitas, mis amigas de la esquina lo recitan. Wow. <laughs> wow, that looks really awesome. I, I start dancing like just just by listening to the song. <laughs> so in a way, you know, like I feel like that's something that we we've tried to be like doing in everything we do. Right. Make it exciting. Make it something that you like, even if you're not a designer, you're like, what? I want to use it. Right. Like, And I think that's kind of something that we put into everything that we do. So um, we're really excited to have today Rojo. Uh, we have Maria T and we have Short joining us so that we can talk a little bit about the creative AI power tool that we, we've we been working on. Well, I, we've been working like if I was working on it too. <laughs> so you'll be, li you'll be listening to like different obstacles and perspectives from a developer, which is Rojo. You have a product manager, which is Maria T and we'll be seeing what, what obstacles she is running to as well. And also we have Short as a designer, right? And he's been working on the brand and some of the user experience, the UI. So it's it's going to be really interesting. You're going to get to see the whole insight and we're really excited. So let's, let's get started. Let's begin. First of all, we're going to have a few questions. And these questions, like there's some that are going to be for all of you. And then there's some other ones that are going to be specific to each one of you. So first question for all is why why did you decide to create musho in the first place you know that's kind of like the the biggest question that we have uh just before we we keep continue my name is brandon and i'm part of the together team i'm in the art team illustrator uh, character designer and i'm gonna be your host today so uh just wanted to say hi to everybody and so we have this first question. Why did you decide to create Musho in the first place? What was the gap that you found uh, that you identified in the design market or maybe the tech market that you were like, you know what, we need to do this. Um, so we're going to start with Mariette first. Hi, Brandon. Well, thanks Hello. for, I'm so excited to be here and joining you all for this event. Um, I think one obvious answer for us and a super clear gap was the fact that AI was everywhere, but it still wasn't in the design realm as much. And it specifically was not in Figma, which is a tool that in Musho and Bueno and Together were always using every single day. So we found that uh, that was a very easy, accessible entry point for the team to start exploring what AI could do in design, but also make sure to really keep it in, in the workflow and the tools that everyone's using. So mm -hmm. could we start by bringing in, you know, DALI to do cool images in Figma? Could we start bringing in stable diffusion? Can we start bringing in all the different powers of open AI? can we actually start doing some design? And beginning in Figma, where there was a lack of AI, once in the very beginning when we started this, was a was a gap that um, we identified and we wanted to start there. So of course, there's many other uh, reasons why we decided to do this, but I think that was a really cool um, and interesting entry point for us, especially with so much um, with so much experience using the tool. 
Yeah, I guess it was like a, a really exciting and nerve wracking challenge, right? Like to be able to just like hop in this journey of UI. And um, what about you, Rojo? Can you tell us a little bit about why you decided? What, what, why did you decide to join this project? Yeah, of course. So first of all, I want to just like talk about like this was a moment that we were in a, in a trip in Amsterdam. And I remember like Pablo having this idea of, hey, we should focus on AI. And he was like a few months ago, like, hey, how can we focus on AI? How can we focus on AI? And he was trying to make something in AI. And at some moment he like, were like, hey, I think design market, it's important because they need AI. And we started working on that. And I, on my perspective, I think we wanted to rise the bar for designers um also also i work as a designer as a developer sorry i studied design and my career in tech started started as a product designer and i think that designer work is really full of things that we can automate and i think designers they we, we don't we don't just want to go to figma and create stuff because sometimes it, it's kind of boring to just create stuff mm -hmm. and honestly I think that if you want to 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 have a designer in your team, it's not because they know how to use Figma, but it's because they are creatives and they are people that know how to create stuff and they are people that really inspire the team. And if you use the time of the designer, like on creating manual stuff, you can like be not using the designer and also the designer can feel like he's not really being as full creative as as he can so i think that ai could help us a lot to like reduce the uh the blank paper syndrome and also help designers to get more time to be creative and to have more ideas and to resolve more issues because sometimes i think that designers really i, I have i have i remember this phrase of a, a professor in chile that he was like Design will not save the world, but the, but the world will not be saved without design. Mm -hmm. So I see designers as people that will save the world, and but they will not save the world just using Figma. They will save the world being creative and creating solutions. So I think, I think we are just giving them more time to be creative and reducing the time of just making stuff in any tool that they use. Yeah, I think it's it's really exciting, you know, like how you mentioned, I think sometimes as as creatives, we kind of need a little kickstart, like we just need someone to give us a little push. And I feel like it's, it's something that really does help out. And that's why I would like to know your point of view short. And let's see what you think about this. Hey, Brandon. Yeah. Um, well, I think most of the people here have tried mid journey or dolly to play around with it a little bit and um it is great at producing uh photography or uh, rendered images or basically anything that is not <laughs> an interface because if you ask it to uh to 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 output uh, an interface like hey uh, Mid journey, can you create for me? Uh, uh, I don't know a mobile app design. And what you'll see then is that it's really bad at that. So <clears throat> there are not many tools around that can uh, produce really quality uh, UI design, and um, that's something that we wanted to explore with Musho. How far can we go with that? uh and uh, create something that makes really really cool uh responsive uh, dev ready uh designs so um yeah that's that's a big part of why we uh, uh started this project yeah i think uh, how you mentioned is really crazy because the dev ready part that that whole thing is just like a whole world right like to be able to just hand off the figma file to a dev like in this case, Rojo, like, I think that that part is like 
something that usually it's not really thought of about right it's more of just like oh just show me visually how it looks and i'll see oops i'll show you like you you'll you'll get a a result that you still have to prepare for the dev so that i feel like you kind of took a big chunk a big part of the 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 well i guess the disadvantages and you just like already solved it so that's that's like a super super uh, interesting thing um now when we move on to the next question this one is specifically for mariate and the question is what do you think were the key moments that shaped the path for creating mushu what were those key moments the key moments the most important well so many and some of them rojos already mentioned um, definitely it's been over two years since AI has basically transformed the way almost every person works if you're in a digital a landscape. And um, it took a while for it to start changing the design world itself. Um, so just being in a design company and putting technology first and putting design first rather than how you're achieving it has really opened our minds to be on the lookout for those new types of technologies that can help designers. So at some point it's been NFTs and blockchain. Now it's with AI and all these other cool things that we're doing. So definitely just the entry of AI into the landscape has made us think about how we can bring it into design and build the tool. And then as a company, you know, Pablo brought us all together almost a year ago. We went to Spain, we did this really cool hackathon, and he just put a big, you know, a goal for everyone of like, let's try to be as creative as possible. Let's try to do something with AI that can help designers. And it doesn't matter how silly the idea is, you know, we just want to get everyone's creative juices flowing and see how we can make something with this. Um, and we did all sorts of crazy things. We actually designed a tool that only gave NFT legs. Like <laughs> we made stable diffusion and illustrate legs for our robotos and a couple of other things that we had from our other uh, products. Um, and of course we didn't build Musho that day. It was only, you know, it was maybe three or four months later when we actually started to think about, okay, how can we actually bring this technology and make it design? Because no one was doing it. it. It was just so hard. It's still hard. And that's why we're still working on it and iterating it so hard. Um, but it was, you know, those key moments of just trying to think outside of the box and see how we can bring in something that maybe wasn't built for designers in mind and leverage it to build a cool tool. Um, and then after that, there's been so many milestones. There's been so many key moments. Like every time the technology itself changes, every time there's a new API, every time there's something that is leveled up, you know, whether that was GPT-4, whether that was, you know, when DALI finally was doing its API, when we had, well, Midjourney still is not released for everyone, but it was still like a key moment. We've been using it a lot for products like Lumi, which are within Musho. And there's this technology called retrieval augmented generation that we call RAG, which is something that Rojo should explain more than I should. <laughs> but it's also like a key moment within the technology industry that's made us look at everything, look at the landscape, look at the technology and see if we can use it to make the designers' lives easier, improve their workflows. And each time this happens, and this will happen on a weekly basis, we're all scrambling towards trying to see if we can make that and whether we should use that technology. And, you know, a lot of times we've used them, we've taken these milestones for the industry and put them in practice in Musho. And other times we've tested them and figure out, hey, these, these don't necessarily fit within what we need to do in Musho. Maybe they're not as advanced yet, or maybe we just don't need them and we can do it another way. Mm -hmm. But each time the AI industry does something, you'll see everyone in the team just scrambling and being like, oh, this is so cool. We can bring it in this way. We can try it this way and that way. So there's been just so much testing and we've been involving with the industry 
as fast as we can so that we can really be in the forefront and be the first ones doing AI for design. Yeah, I, I, I remember how Pablo, little by little, he would kind of say like, hey, come here, <laughs> use use AI, just do this little thing with AI. Like it was in a way, uh, he was like just trying to show you that that you don't have to be scared of it, right? And I, and I feel like that initial, um, just like inviting you to, to use it, like even if it was just on one little thing, uh, little by little, it just kind of said, oh, nothing happened, right? Or, hey, that should, it actually helped me. And I, I think that that was really important for all, all of us to be on board with it, right? Because we started when it was still like something evil and something that was like going to ruin our lives. And so I think Pablo taking that first step and just kind of saying, like, hey, look, I'm here. I'm using it and nothing's happening. Come closer. And that really helped all of us to just be on the same page. And I just want to move on to now to the next question, which is for Rojo. Rojo, in your opinion, what do you think that what, what do you think makes Musho stand out from the rest of the AI tools that we see around that are in the market? Yeah. So through all this journey, I have been testing a lot of other tools. Obviously, we are like really checking the market all the time. And honestly, some of them are amazing. And I think they have reached to a great point. And we knew that we're, we were going to, like, there were going to be other tools around when, when we started working on Musho. But our focus always have been to create not just template, not just design, but good design. Mm -hmm. And to make AI, like, empower designers, we don't want just to create a simple template. Mm -hmm. We kind of started like that, but was never the idea. Uh, so... We wanted AI to really create good proposals for designers. We want to really create something that a good designer will make, not just like any random AI design stuff. And I think that that is important because at some point, if you just get to a design that is not that good, you will work more than if you didn't use the AI. So I have seen some other tools that they sometimes use templates or they simply don't create good design because also there are tools that create design, uh, not just use templates. But honestly, I think they are there is a, re a really like pattern that you can see in the industry that is like they are not focusing on creating well designed stuff. They are focusing on creating AI stuff or populating templates. And it's understandable, like, as you know, like design is, is like an art, it's a soft skill and it's so difficult to understand good design. It's like, yeah, you can study for four or five years and that will not make you a great designer because you need to practice because it's, it's a really soft skill that you have to really work all day, all night to understand it and read and have um, inspiration and watch other designs, see other design. Uh, so it, I understand that good design is, is like difficult for for all because we also found that in the in our journey. Like we were just trying to through prompts to chat GPT and hey, give me good design. And we found <laughs> that it was not that easy. That we, we will need to make a lot of other stuff. And I think that's what what we really um I think that it's what what makes Mushu stand out from from other other tools that we really focus on great design. We really want to focus on creating something that we really give value to designers. We are not just using AI to create websites. We are trying to create beautiful website that you want to see, that you want to visit, that you want to put on your portfolio and that you want to work in because yeah, maybe at this point the websites, you can still edit them. You can still work on them. And that's the idea that you can work on that and if you just have like an ai stuff well maybe you it would be better if you start in a blank in a blank canvas and that's it yeah i think that's like the biggest uh thing right high quality we we've always been in like that's kind of the philosophy like you gotta make something and no matter if it's something simple as a button or maybe just like something like as big as a landing page but the ha the quality has to be there you know and and I feel like we kind of all uh, have in common that um, 
we just want things that are pretty things that are well done right and that i feel like that sets the standard really high for all of us because we know that we're going to be checking it and and if you make that button wrong you'll probably know and you'll say ah oh, they're going to tell me that that button's wrong <laughs> so yeah, exactly. the fact yeah so so that i feel like the the quality part of it is is something that's really really uh it, it does make it stand out and also i think something important is that we started at, at some point we were talking about hey why we started at Figma and we're like, dude, we started at Figma. It's the standard for designers. Yeah. If, if we can achieve it in Figma where our users are designers, mm -hmm. this, this will be the, the difficult part. Then everything is easy. And yeah, because we want to, to challenge ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think we're all here because of the, the challenge part of it. Uh, and exactly. Pablo always says, like, if you're here, we're going to require high quality from you. And if you don't feel like doing high quality, we'll just like move aside because we got to keep the, the path going. Right. We got to keep uh, moving forward to, on this adventure. Yeah. So next question is for short. As a designer, how do you think Musho uses AI to amplify the design process? Yeah. Uh, so Musho is becoming um, a tool that different creators use to um, to get the project started quickly, um, and it doesn't do everything a designer will do yet, uh, which is like the finer details or uh, bringing a design to excellence. Um, Musho just accelerates that process and helps the designer get there quicker. That's um, what's it, what it's doing now. And I think when you're exploring something new, a new design, uh, a new company or a new brand, or even when you're working with something established, uh, but you want to, to iterate on it, usually that process can bring the blank canvas syndrome. <laughs> you know what it is? Yeah. Where you don't know where to begin. Yes. Um, so there's so many options you can take so many paths you can take and it's hard to even take the first step it, it can be scary mm -hmm. and musho makes it easier to not just take one step but multiple steps to see what works and what doesn't in a quick way mm -hmm. so basically musho takes you uh takes your design 70 percent of the way there and uh you finish the rest so you can focus uh, on the details, make the design perfect. Um, so yeah, that's that's how, how it amplifies uh, design uh, process at the moment. Yeah, I think that's a, it's like a really cool help. And I think that's, uh, we're gonna move on into this next question, which is for Mariate and it is, can you describe a moment or like even just like if it was a feature in Musho's development that you're like par particularly proud of? Well, I'm proud of everything. I feel like a, like a proud mama in that sense. <laughs> Every time we do something, even if it's something small, trying to always celebrate. Um, but I think a really pivotal moment for us is, so when we just started Musho, when we started trying to get you know AI to design these really good quality outputs and have something that designers would love and would want to get started with. You know, as short said, it's it accelerates that initial point. But if the first thing that you see is not giving you anything, it's not good at all, then it's not going to really help you. Um, but when we started, we began by training AI to be very smart at picking different design components and different design layouts, uh, knowing that we were going forward and try to build a fully designed layout just with AI. So those two things are super different. I think I, I might be confusing myself trying to explain it. But at first, imagine that we train AI to be like, you're going to be like the best design director in the world, and you're going to be able to choose and put together colors and typographies and sections and all these types of things from what we're giving to you. 
And then eventually we started training our own model to do all of that stuff without, it's not picking, it's actually picking, it's designing, it's doing absolutely everything from scratch. And it's something that we're calling experimental mode because mm. it's testing, we keep testing it every week. Every week we're releasing improvements and enhancing its performance. Um, but when we finally released that, which was in early January, and we were like, oh my God, we can actually have AI do absolutely everything. Uh, that was a super big moment for us. Um, and after that, you know, the first couple of designs that we got it to do, if you asked it to like try to design Facebook, it designed Facebook from like 2012, but it designed Facebook. And we were like, wow, I mean, it, <laughs> it has all the knowledge, it can do this. Yeah. Granted, it still has like this design style of 10 years ago, but we were like, oh my God, what can it do? And then we got it to design Spotify and then we got it to design Stripe. And then we got it to design all these like uh, more modern tools. And then we eventually uh, got it to a place where it's doing, you know, landing pages and home pages almost as good as that initial version. That was this really like clever creative director telling everyone what they have to pick and what are the best, like um, what's the best sort of like recipe for a good design. Um, so users can try that now. And again, it's, it has its quirks because we're changing it every week, but it was so important for us that we were able to do it. And not only that, we actually came up with a way to fine tune it and train it on our team's data so that whenever we're designing, we get to pass the AI a report card where it's like, oh, the sections have different layouts, check. No images are missing, check this design exceeded my expectations check and if there's one thing out of like a list of 20 things that it doesn't pass where like you did a terrible job ai we're so sorry this does not pass you get an f but that's <laughs> been work from every single person of the team going in every day designing and helping the ai get better and the team itself taking all of that feedback and fitting it back into the design and getting it better and better and better so it's still experimental it's still an alpha phase it's still you know out there but it's been one of the proudest moments i think for everyone in the team seeing that oh my god we can actually do this it's not just theoretical we can mm. we can get ai to design wow that's really that's really interesting that's really awesome yeah i, th I think like the question i guess having that sper experimental mode the only thing that's going to happen is that it's going to keep evolving, right? And I think this question is perfect for Rojo, who we want to ask you, how do you see Musho evolving in the next few years? Yeah, uh, honestly, uh, I see Musho evolving a lot. I think our idea could be something like that that is not close right now, like, we, we, we want to get crazy about this. And we have been talking about like, really personalized websites, mm. but, and yeah, and, and that's what something wants to do, like, right? Like everyone wants the website to be like really personalized and to really uh, show what I want to share and what I want to like create. And, but we have been like thinking about like, for example, these, these, these are some crazy conversation we have had, like, like imagine a future world where you create your website, you as a designer and you put your stuff and yeah and your designer maybe it's a blog i don't know and you design it some way so you can really enjoy visiting that website but maybe brandon is more like with lover of comic sense and ai knows that you love comic sense so when you enter my website the website is designed for you but it's, but it's the website i design mm -hmm. so Sometimes we think about like we get crazy about this, and sometimes we get to that. So I think Musho will the, the the easy answer is Musho will get better, and we will design better. But I think AI has so much potential that sometimes we don't see. Like we honestly like just think like, hey, yeah, create images and making movies in the future, and sometimes. But then we have like really great idea like for example the real-time translation of, of podcasts some kind of stuff i think design can get to that point like like we are translating design just for you not just the designer but also the user and it will be 
something that you enjoy. And honestly, I don't know. I, I see that, that that the internet could like really get more fun now with AI and really good. Like, I don't know. At, at some point, I think people understand internet as WhatsApp and Facebook, and that's internet for everyone. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Twitter, but that's not real internet. So, but, but imagine <laughs> maybe in the future we have social media and social media will not only like filter tweets, but also will make the, the, the interface just as you like it and you will enjoy it. And I don't know, maybe, maybe if I'm a grotesque modernism fan and I will see all the websites, websites like that and I will enjoy it and I will have the best experience. So yeah, I think, I think we'll, this will like be a great experience to design for, a great experience to create, but also a great experience to use, like to not be related with AI, but I know the website is great just for me and I will understand it great. And also this will be like more inclusive, you know, like, I don't know, for example, I cannot see a lot without my glasses. So maybe it's like something that, hey, let's make the design for this person that maybe is not really good with watching small, seeing a small text and that could be adaptive and creative. So yeah, I, I think that's, two way in the future in the future and i think it's a crazy idea but well i think we have to aim to the to the to to the stars maybe at some point we hit the moon you know yeah exactly that's what i was going to say you know like you got to just have crazy ideas that's usually right now they might seem far away but with ai we've seen the improvements so fast that i think we could get there sooner than we think yeah and so, i think that's that's really really important and I don't know. I just, I, I always like try to 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 focus on this on this phrase that I that I say Jobs once said that it was like, you have to to know that, you have done to understand and to remember that everything around you was created by someone, that it was not, smarter than you. So it's that's important because we can change the world, because we believe it and we are we are having crazy ideas and we believe in those crazy ideas. Yeah, yeah, that's really awesome. I think we, we have, like, this is just the beginning, you know, so it's it's really exciting thinking about it like that. And I think uh, one important thing for uh, Mariate is just, like, being able to hear from people, right? Being able to see people that tested it, that they know, they might say, like, you know what, I would like this, I would like that. Uh, for example, Arif said Musho can include, if Musho can include inclusive design ideas, that would be really cool, right? So my question for Mariate is, what has been the most valuable feedback from a user so far? And how has this actually shaped the roadmap? Well, of course, when users say, thank you so much, Musho has changed my life. It's super gratifying. Um, but I think that the most important piece of feedback is the fact that AI is existing and is so commonly used for a tasks like copywriting, helping you with your research papers, helping you with so many aspects, helping you with, you know, your spreadsheets and your millions of, of formulas. People have come to uh, expect a certain behavior from potentially open AI, which is the biggest the, the biggest one out there. And when they're starting to interact with Musho, they come to some roadblocks of like, it's not behaving the way mm -hmm. that, you know, ChatGPT is behaving to my questions. So the most valuable piece of feedback is, you know, really how understanding how each of these users have tried using Musho and have failed to generate the correct response with it. Um, and how we can take that intention, take that experience and actually try to, through UI or through prompting or through actual design, understand what the user's intention is and try to um, and try to anticipate it for them. And that's hmm. the trickiest thing to do in a plugin. I think design-wise and AI-wise, we know how to work as a plugin. But when we're talking about how do we explain to users what Musho can do and cannot do in such a small um, frame, in such a small format, that's when we've actually come to the biggest roadblocks. Um, so yeah, exactly. Every time a user is like, I tried getting Musho to do this, but it actually did that. 
we're always taking note and trying to see like what we can do next time so that we can give them that expected behavior. And it's shaped our roadmap a lot. Um, at some point, it shaped it too much because we were like, oh, everyone's using AI as a chat tool. Let's make Musho a chat tool. Uh... We tried and uh, we, we, we got it to a point where it's giving interesting results and eventually realized that wasn't the correct format. And sometimes, you know, we, we always are listening to our users and, and going into these side projects and quests to try to build these things for them. And at some point we have to always go back and be like, okay, but what are we doing? Who is our audience? What are we trying to solve? Um, we're, we're not just trying to like do what chat GPT does because maybe that doesn't make as much sense in this type of environment. So um, it's always shaping our roadmap and, and that's, I think the most constructive feedback we get is whenever we get that criticism, that, that failure of reaching that expectation that's, that's making us level up. Yeah. And like, I, I could understand, you know, like looking at it from the outside, well, some of us could like think that designing for AI, it's probably easy. You know, you just create a text and you input it. And in reality, it's way more complex than that. Right. And I, I think that's something that we sometimes don't even think about. And that's where the next question comes in uh, for short, who was actually a designer. Can you share with us the design challenges that you have in, uh, you have came across with creating Musho's interface? Ah, um, well, one one of the challenges was um, the size. <laughs> Sounds uh, weird, but the the um, the Musho plugin is of course a, a Figma in Figma and. Uh, the window is pretty small, so we had to uh, cram a lot of stuff in that small window. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, the, the chat itself, the chat history, um, uh, you can manage your brand inside Musho. So uh, uh, that means uh, you can add colors from your brand or a typography from your brand. And when you put in a prompt, uh, uh, Musho will uh, use that in the in the generation. Um, uh, so uh, also plans, uh, billing, account, all that stuff. Uh, that's a lot in a small window. So uh, we try to look for ways to declutter the UI all the time and make everything as intuitive as, as possible. So that's that's one of the challenges we faced, and uh, also. Uh, we're in the AI design industry, so the product evolves very quickly, almost on a daily, weekly basis. Uh, we have new stuff, so uh, it can do more and more uh, all the time. So that asks for constant iterations in design too. So in the beginning, for example, we started with just an input field where a user can put in a prompt and um, get a result. But we noticed pretty quickly that I wasn't going to cut it uh, any longer. Um, so we needed to upgrade the UI and uh, did a redesign uh, where we had a more chatbot-like approach um, uh, so the user could get more feedback uh, and interact directly with uh, the Musho assistant. So yeah, iterating and uh, uh, keeping the UI up to date with the technology is uh, is another uh, challenge, but a fun challenge. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really, really exciting. Uh, I think like we're, we're how you mentioned, you know, it's like just the beginning and you with the feedback also can make a lot of improvements. So I'm pretty sure that, that it's going to get easier each time. And right now we're going to move on to the next question from for Rojo. And this question, we're going to get to like a little bit of the technical stuff. Uh, can you share some insights into the technical challenges faced in integrating the advanced AI with the web design principles in Musho's development? Yeah, sorry. I don't know if you can hear me because my webcam like you start. <coughs> but can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so I will make yeah. this one 
as a black screen right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think that something that it was really important for us is, and more most insightful part is that at the beginning we thought like everybody, like AI is going to solve all our problems and we'll make it just with a click and with a prompt and that's it. Uh, but no, and it's not just a prompt engineering. Like we try to, hey, let's refine the prompt. Let's make it better. So, so it will like create better stuff. But no, it's not just that. It's a lot of work is like training the AI is like working on fine tuning this AI and giving help and try to work on that. And for example, at the beginning, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we were creating the first idea in Amsterdam and we thought AI will make it along, but then we realized we need to use templates and that's how it started, like using templates. And then we were like, Hey, okay, now let's make AI make everything. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on making AI create everything. Um, because yeah, we realized that it was not that easy, but I think that, that Pablo has already talked about this and I think it's something great and important that is like, hey, be be um, don't have fear of challenges and don't have fear of making great stuff. And if you think everything is easy to make, hey, just try it and maybe you will get to hard parts. But that hard parts will be like really important. And there is there is this book that I'm reading that it's called Hackers and Painters. I mean, it's called it, it's talking about like the relation with uh, with artists and programmers. And there is this part where they talk about like difficult decision and they were like, always go to the difficult to the most difficult decision possible. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want if you have path A, that it's easy path and you have path B, that is the hard path. Try to go to path B, always, always. It doesn't matter how challenging, it doesn't matter, just try to make it hard. And yeah, I think I think that's that was one of the most challenging uh, stuff uh, to like really getting conscious that AI will not make everything. We have to work on that to make everything. And yeah, I, th I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's that's really interesting. Just getting to see that that side, you know, like we just see the the input and we get a result, but we don't know what's, uh, all the stuff that goes behind. So it's it's really cool. Um, we have one last question because time is going by so fast, and we're just gonna answer this quick question for all of you, and we'll get to something one little surprise that we have for you. And for this question we have it's what's the future of AI in the design industry and will robots take our jobs what do you guys think let's start with short Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that's the question everybody is dreading <laughs> right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well personally I th I think um, that uh, AI uh, is not gonna take over our jobs. It's it's gonna help us um, in the decision making process a lot. I think you know making a product is not just making a pretty page. It's uh, it takes a lot of careful decision making and uh, custom solutions. And I think AI will help us humans. Uh, make those decisions to speed up our workflow. Um, and uh, yeah, don't be afraid of losing your job just yet as a designer. <laughs> just embrace <laughs> it and uh, uh, see what, how it can help you. I think that's important to keep an open mind about it. Yeah, I remember Pablo once he told me, it's not your enemy, it's a, it's a tool. Right, and I, I think exactly. that's really, really important. Uh, what about you, Mariette? What do you think? It, well, I can absolutely 100% say that as one of the top five Musho users, I'm using it every, all day, every day. Um, and as a product manager, I am not anywhere, like even like 
an inch of a way close of taking Short's job, like at all. So like <laughs> there's no one, no designer needs to be afraid of AI coming to take their jobs. I can tell you I'm using these tools and I am not close <laughs> to like the slightest of levels. So um, all jokes aside though, I mean, no, it's a tool. We're going to use it. It's going to make us do be better at our jobs. It's going to make mm -hmm. us faster, more productive. Uh, but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be afraid of it at all. It's not our AI is not our enemy. Unless we treat it badly, then it will come back and <laughs> hunt us in the future and kill us, but treat your AI nicely yeah. and it would design Say, thank things you. better. Say thank you and please, and just be really nice to it. <laughs> Uh, so now, what about you, Rojo? What do you think? Yeah, so I, th I, I think I will have like a controversial uh, idea is like, yeah, it will, it will take your job. Everyone's job, it will yeah. take it. But that's good because it will take the, 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 the boring job, I think. I think that that's the idea that hmm. hey, at, at some point we were thinking like, hey, we are making the same thing that we were making like, I don't know three decades ago. So this is time for robots to make this the, the boring part, to make the hard part, and let's work with them. Yeah. For example, I don't know, like I use Copilot, that is the AI for uh, developers. And dude, it, it's great. It will it, it saves me a lot of time for manual stuff and maybe more comp like mathematically, like something I can do in 10 minutes, it can make it in 10 seconds. Okay, I will use it. So it's my ally. So it's taking part of my job, but that's great because I'm trying to use it. And that's the idea. Hey, just use it because that's how it works. Yeah, when 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 all these like machines started to getting into the world on the uh, industrial revolution, yeah, they were taking jobs. Well, they were taking more, uh, more hard, like body hard jobs, but they will not take all the jobs in, of the people and they will create more jobs. The other day we, was, we were watching like a, this AI that was a developer, uh, a, uh, like a developer replacement. Mm -hmm. And in a community of developers, we can say like, this, will, this, this, this thing will create more jobs that we will take because a lot of people will be involved on this thing. So yeah, just just use it. The best way, like, hey, have your enemies, you have your friends close, but have your enemies closer. So <laughs> you have to work with them, learn how to use it, and yeah, it will take your job, but it will take the 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 boring part of your job. I love it. I love that. Uh, I think that's a good way to look at it. So we're done with the chat. Maria T is gonna show us a little demo with the time that we have left. So I'm just gonna uh, send it over to her. Maria, can you show us what Musho can do for us? Sure, hopefully everyone can see my screen now. Let's see. Let us know in the chat if, if you can see the screen. We're happy to have you here. We hope you enjoyed it and now you're gonna get to see the magic. <laughs> no pressure, Brandon, thanks. <laughs> We actually just been creating this, this presentation that has a couple of challenges and tips for new users to actually get to try out Musho. So I'm going to follow this one. Um, so Musho pretty much starts in Figma. Uh, you need to install that plugin. Uh, you need to sign up. It's just going to ask you for a couple of details and each user gets a free generation to try out Musho, and then they can sign up for a free trial for 10 days, which is going to unlock a whole bunch of new generations. So once you have it open, it, we have these couple of these pills in here, which are basically suggestions. It, we were inspired a little bit about OpenAI for first time users who kind of need those suggestions to see what it can do. Um, so I don't know, let me try to do a uh, I'll do something for a portfolio page. So I'm going to create a minimalistic portfolio landing page for a freelance photographer. I might change this in here. And right now I'm designing with our legacy mode. This is the one that I was mentioning that is this super cool like director of design 
<laughs> choosing all of these different elements that come into the design. So it's pretty quick in, in designing the output. And then we have the experimental mode, which is a lot slower. It's building every single thing just based on AI. Um, okay, so it's building the layout. It's populating the copy. Uh, I love the, it has the black overlay. It has this gallery that I'm seeing in here. Oh, this is, this is looking, this is looking really cool. Wow, um, really yeah, so this is generating that initial page. And once it's generated, we go back to the presentation and it'll show you that you can actually resize it to see how responsive it is. And you can do a couple of things with it. You can remix the copy and adjust it for tone, or maybe you want to make it longer, make it shorter, whatever you need it to. And you can change images within this uh, legacy mode generator. So we're ready with this one. Um, it's almost done. It's pretty responsive. There's something happening in here that we'll take a look into, but it should be responsive so that you can use it for mobile design as well. We have some client praises and everything. So if I select this block that just has text, I also have the suggestions that are just tailored for that copy. So say that a, I want to make this entire text a little bit longer so I can choose that. And it's only going to change the copy for the selected block that I have. So it's making it a little bit longer, but it's still looking good in the design. So it's not breaking anything, which is cool. I love that it's choosing to say one instead of <laughs> one, just because spelling yeah. out one is actually longer. Uh, and there we go. We have longer text. Uh, you can remix a copy as much as you want. Um, and then you can actually remix the images. So this is a really cool thing. If you just select your image layers, and also start remixing, you can get it to, I don't know, let's say I want pictures of cameras and I can select all those layers. And what it's doing right now is that by default, it's going to pull images from Lumi, which is an AI generated image library that's been curated, uh, curated by the team. And not bringing me back a lot of cameras, is it? Oh, I think I, I might have had a typo there that broke things. So let's change it back to photography. But you can and, select uh, all the different image layers. Sorry. I know, uh, Edward asked if this was being live recorded. And, and yes, it will be recorded. And uh, we were going to post it on YouTube once it's up. Great. Yep. Um, here we go. I think I had a typo and said camera instead of camera, which might have freaked it out a bit. But now that I said photography, it updated all of these different images. And if you want to get really creative, say that I want to have a camera on a, a pointing a horse, whatever we want to say. And make it green. This is the most random of prompts people <laughs> ever do. And I'm just going to write something that says dash dash Dali. I'm going to pick one of these. And it's going to try to create an image with Dali of a camera <laughs> pointing a horse. It's going to try to make it green. So anything can happen. Uh, this is generating in real time. Um, this is not the best of prompts, so please do not try this at home. Be smarter about your generations. Um, and let's wait for a couple of seconds as it generates. So we have a green horse and a camera that's pointing at it. And, wow, that's um, crazy. <laughs> yeah. and if, you, if you like this, I mean, you have it here, so it's basically a... You have Dali right at your fingertips when you're mm -hmm. when you're using Musho. So, I, this was fun. I, I'll do I'll do more green horses in the future. <laughs> and other things that you can do is you can create stylists. So say that you have a brand. A, oh, we have something here that people 
some people in this chat know what Musho Folios is, but I don't want to say anything. <laughs> um, but you can create a stylist and you can say that you're working with Coca-Cola. You can add a description of what Coca-Cola is. You can choose the brand color and you can add the fonts that your brand uses and then go back and generate. And it's actually going to generate with that brand, which is super, super cool. Um, and you can switch your stylist by just clicking in here, or you can go back to Musho to, for the default. And then uh, the last one, which is like the super fun for, for us is experimental mode. So this is probably going to take a little bit long for today's demo, <laughs> but if you go from website to experimental mode, again, this is an alpha, so it's a bit buggy and try to build, let's see what we want it to build. Let's do a landing page for an art studio. Let's see what it'll bring. Oh no, I actually want to try an architectural firm that might be better. So the, the UI is changing. It's no longer building directly in Figma. It's actually the AI is designing absolutely everything first, and then we're bringing it into Figma as the very last step. And what's really cool about this mode is that you're not, you can remix actual layouts and it will give you different versions of your layout at the end. So when you're using the legacy mode, uh, the one that I showed you earlier, it can change images, it can change text, and we're working towards making it all so change design. But if you're doing designs with experimental mode, you can actually ask it to like, hey, like turn this like section into a grid or I don't like this background. Uh, why don't you change it with another image or swap this entire layout's colors and try some new ones that can get you inspired. So all of those things are available to you once you are designing with experimental mode. And again, it's slower, uh, but we think it's cooler in a, in a sense because you can be really, really prescriptive in the things that you ask it to do and say, I need this hex color. I need blocks with A, B, and C. I need all of these different things and it will try its best to do it. Um, at some points it might make some um, weird design choices, but, but it'll try its best. Mm. So it's 50, oh, 70%. Okay. Might be able to see this one. Wow. wow. Okay. And this one, we also, Again, this is the checklist. This is a report card. This is only for admins, though. There's no, you're not being spied on by Musho. We're, we're only <laughs> training on our own data. So, I mean, yeah, it meets my expectations. There are enough sections. They all have a different layout. I don't like the, oh, no, they don't all have a different layout. Mm. There, are, there are some excessively wide elements. Text is re readable. There's no images missing, not that I see. So it didn't do a good job. So bad Musho, <laughs> gonna send that to our team so that they can fix it in the future. <laughs> uh, but still, you can see that the design is also responsive. You can then actually go in and remix these blocks. So you know, I don't, I don't like this block. Let me see what I can do. Let me turn this block into a grid, and I'm gonna ask it to showcase different elements of my project. So again, it's only going to remix the layout of the design that I'm selecting and it's going to build this new one. Oh, and I can see it here already. It's building this cool mm -hmm. layout. Wow. Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting just like the way you think of things, like you probably have something in your mind, but it might show you something that's completely that you weren't expecting, but it still looks good so that you can just adjust it. Right. So it's, that's really cool. Yeah, that's that's what these suggested prompts are there to do. Mm -hmm. It's really to like give you a guidance of the types of prompts that you need to use. But again, I mean, the more prescriptive you are with your prompts, the better uh, chances that you'll get a better result. So it, again, it's it built this grid. It can absolutely be better, uh, mm -hmm. but these are just one of the cool things that you can start doing with experimental mode and uh, we're constantly improving it. So bad Musho, 
some <laughs> missing images. <laughs> wow, that was really awesome. Thank you so much, Mayate. And well, you could check out uh, Musho. Uh, today is, well, how we mentioned, this is like a, re a really special event. It's a really special day for us. Uh, one thing, one, one reason why it's special is because Pablo, well, he's not here with us. He is in Georgia and he's giving some talks over there and he's like, uh, well, just like going out there and, and just promoting everything that he, we've been working on and and we're really excited for him. And uh, it's also a special day because we have launched Musho in Product Hunt. So you could go support uh, on Product Hunt by scanning the QR code that's over uh, on the top left corner. You can check out their Musho and we would really appreciate your support. Thank you so, so much for being here, for listening to this this talk. If you have any comments, any questions, uh, you can leave them in the chat. And we really appreciate your time. Uh, Pablo will be on tour for a few weeks. That's that's a fact. Uh, we've already mentioned it in, in, uh, in the Discord community. But, well, he's going to be in Madrid. He's going to be in Barcelona. He's going to be in San Diego. So uh, if you want to meet with him, if you want to just hang out a little bit and, and maybe chat, uh, well, you can just uh, reach out to us and we'll look for a way to so you can meet him. And we're going to have actually different events in each city. It's each one of these cities. So uh, be we'll keep you posted, you know, so you can know uh, where he's going to be, if it's going to be a podcast or if he's going to be a live a conference or um We'll keep you posted on on where he is throughout his his journey uh, in Europe and when when he gets to San Diego. So uh, thank you so much uh, for your time. We really really appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. Short Rojo Mariate. It was nice talking to you and just getting a little bit more insight in in the Thanks whole for having us. journey. Thank you. Well, that's that's it from us. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody.